What's up everybody, welcome to Risky Fitness. So the first thing you're probably going to notice about this video is that my audio is completely out of sync with the little video of me down there in the corner. That's because for some crazy reason OBS has decided arbitrarily to not record my audio anymore. Even though it says in OBS that it is recording my audio and I have peaks and valleys and as far as I can tell it is recording but then when I actually go ahead and view the video back it's not recording. So until I get that sorted out I'm going to have to kind of do a separate audio track. So please ignore the man in the corner. He is he is saying different things. So the most important thing about getting MAME running in RetroArch is to make sure that you are using the correct core for the ROM that you have. Now, what people often do wrong here is they download ROMs from all over the place and then they just go ahead and try to download multiple cores in MAME to match up to the ROMs that they have. And that's the wrong way to do it. What you need to do is choose a version of MAME and stick with it. Don't download a bunch of ROMs or get one of these horrible images, one of these horrible Raspberry Pi images from Arcade Punks or whatever, and then go chasing down 14 different ROM, different main cores to make them work with the ROMs that you have. It's, it's not gonna work. Don't do that. Pretty sure it's what I'm talking about down there right now. So this document that I'm going to open up here, RetroPie or UK, this document is your go-to for any information you want about this ROM, uh, this emulator rather, and what cores to download and everything. So if you're using RetroArch, you look at this, it's going to tell you what core and what ROM set. And all you have to do is go and find that ROM set for the core that you chose to use. Now which core you're going to choose to use is up to you. Uh, I usually just use the current main because it's current, but if you do that, you're going to have to update your ROMs pretty regularly whenever something stops working, basically, because they do make changes to the ROM sets. But most people use the 2003, and the reason they use the 2003 is because the, dot zero, the 0 0.78 set has most of the games that you're going to want to play, and it's very easy to find. It's very solid, it's stable, and it's not going anywhere. It's not going to change. It's been the same for 18 years. Nothing's changing. Now if you want to play some, like, some newer stuff like NFL Blitz or something like that, you're going to need a, new, a newer version, but that covers pretty much everything up to the late 90s, including like the late Neo Geo stuff. All your Street Fighter is in there, all your Mortal Kombat, all, you know, all your old stuff, your Pac-Man, Galaga, Centipede, Millipede, all that kind of stuff. You know, Final Fight, X-Men, you know, Simpsons, all that kind of stuff is all there. So that's a pretty solid release to go with. And that's what most people choose, just to make their own lives easier. I would start there, and then if you're looking for games that don't work in it, then maybe change it. But then also, uh, it's a good idea to take the newest game you want to play, and just see if that's in the ROM set for that version of name. And then just download the core that corresponds to that. Yeah, so here's just showing which cores I have loaded. I have the current and I have the 2003. Because the 2003 is just, like I said, it's an easier way to, it's, an easy, it's easier to use. I think it's a better starting point. That's what I would go with. I prefer MAME as my arcade emulator of choice. You can do Final Burn Alpha. There are some other arcade emulators you can choose in here, but there's nothing that any of them do that MAME doesn't already do. So it's really just a matter of preference at that point. I don't know what he's talking about right now. <clears throat> I probably said the same thing just now way more succinctly than I said before. So what I'm saying here is that RetroArch is really bad at importing your main ROMs. So you have to import them manually. You'll have to go back to my original video, my original RetroArch tutorial video and watch that so that you understand the way to manually import these ROMs. Doing it automatically is not going to work. It's a real pain in the ass. Let 
So this Jaffs that I have up here, this is broken, and when I run it, you're going to see what happens if you have a ROM that doesn't work. That's a very common question that I see. What if the ROM doesn't work? So you just see it says required files are missing, the game cannot be run, failed to load content. So you know you either have a bad ROM, or you have a ROM that is for the wrong core version of me. Just make sure that your ROM set matches the version of MAME that you're using. Now I can't tell you where to get ROMs from, that'll get me in big trouble on the channel, but it's really, really easy once you know what to look for. What I did just there is I corrected that, and now I have a correct ROM for Joust. And I'm showing you the file structure here, because you'll notice that the two files here, Joust and Kinst, they're both just zip folders, you don't unzip MAME ROMs ever, you always keep those zipped up. The other folder you see there, that KINST folder, that contains a CHD, or a disk image. So if you have a game that requires a CHD, that's the format you have to use. You have to have a folder with the same file name as the zip folder, and the CHD has to be inside that folder. The game will not work otherwise. Never ever unzip MAME games. I had the same issue when I first used MAME, you know, like I said, uh, 18 years ago, or probably a little longer than that at this point, because I think I was I was back with a version like .47 or something like that. I started, uh, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't work because I unzipped everything, and I had to learn the hard way. And at the time, it was a lot harder to find this information than it is today. So here I've just loaded up Joust. I had the the menu enabled by default when I, when the game opened, and I forgot I had it. I didn't realize I had it fast forward here. <laughs> it took me a second to figure that out. But you can turn this off. I just go through it real quick here. How you do that? Sorry, I wish I knew everything I said. I wish I could just, you know, repeat the entire video, but I don't have a script. And I'm not doing the whole thing again. I have good footage. I'm not I'm not doing the whole thing again. So this is the options menu that you get from the quick menu. You can see there's not really much here, but I just changed the display main menu, menu to off. I think I said here with this menu, most of this is pretty self-explanatory, and if you don't know what something does, you probably don't want to touch it anyway. But anything you really want to do main-wise, you're going to do from the in-game menu anyway. So the in-game menu, you get to by default by pressing the tab key, but there's some other ways to do that too. Now if you don't know how to open up the RetroArch menu, go back to my first video again to learn that. But one way to turn on the main menu is you just go into the RetroArch menu, and you turn that option on, and it pops up, turn it off, and it goes away. That's one really simple way to get there. It's really useful if you have a Raspberry Pi, or another device that you don't have a keyboard connected up to, like a cabinet. So I actually did ask me in another video how do you open the RetroArch menu, so if you don't know that, you really gotta go back to my first video about RetroArch tutorials. You need to know the basics or else the rest is not gonna make sense. And then you're gonna get to videos like this and be really super confused about what you're supposed to be doing. So to open this up, you can press the tab key. If you have a keyboard attached. And there's these main controls. This is the controls for everything. So this is kind of like your baseline control configuration. And then if you configure controls for individual games, it'll override whatever is in here. I have my menu set to the, uh, the right trigger on the controller, which makes it easier.
The other thing that I really don't like about this is you have to scroll all the way to get to get out of that menu, which I think is super annoying. If you know a keyboard shortcut for that that I don't, please let me know. Forgive the noise for a second, I'm opening my drawer to get a USB key. So that's the input this game, that will override the main input. And of course there's other stuff in here for keeping info, game information. You're not really probably going to use this a bit too much. Cheats are here by default. Another good thing to note is that high scores also are supported by default, so you don't have to go and download the high score that bad or anything like that. Uh, I, f I see that question come up a lot. People ask how do you save your high scores, and, and the simple answer is you, you don't have to do anything special. It's already set up for you. I made a joke here, that game is over, because that was suck and set joust. I'm not very good at this game. I remember the first time I played on Nintendo, I was not a fan. That version was not a mess this game. I got bumped again. So I think this is really just to show the game works, it runs nicely, actually looks really good. You'll notice I have the bezel around the screen, and that I do through the bezel project. So you don't do that through me, you do it through bezel project, and I have a separate video for that that you can go to as well. And here's just showing you, this is the CHD file for Killer Instinct. That file has to be in that folder. And you'll notice the file changes the same, it shares rather a file name with the zip and the folder that it in. All that stuff has to be the same. I think I was talking about here how I saw this this question once about this, about CHDs not working and the guy was like indignant, swearing up and down that he was doing it right, but he only had the CHD and he didn't have the zip and it wasn't separate in the folders and there were like three people telling him how to do it and he was like not listening. So don't be that guy. This is the way it has to be. You have to have the folder with the same name as the zip file. The CHD has to be in that folder and the ROMs have to be in the zip file. You need both. You have to have the ROM and the CHD. It's not either or. I actually had someone try and tell me it's either or. You have to have one, but it's not going to work. You do. So here I go ahead and run Killer Instinct just to kind of show you a little bit. This is more of a little bit of a demo here. So you see here I go into the menu and I set up the controls because this is a game that has a little bit more complicated controls than most games. It has a six button fighting game layout. And of course, you know, the, the, the first button is middle punch, and the second button is deep punch, and the third button, no, the second button is hard punch, and third button is deep punch. So to get to this screen, this is basically your setup screen. I use the F2 key on the keyboard. That's one thing you really can't change. You have to use the F2 key on the keyboard to get here. You can probably remap that under the tab menu, though. Know. I've never tried to play with a keyboard yet. Right? And you can also use the tab menu to go into the dip switches. So anything that you can't do from one, you can usually do the other. Either press the F2 key to open the menu, or go into the tab menu and go to dip switches. Sometimes you have unknown switches like these, and if you flip them off and then look in test mode, you can try and figure out what they do. But in this case, I was trying to do that and I couldn't really seem to figure that out, so <laughs> I kind of gave up after a few minutes. But if you play around with it and keep poking at it, you can probably figure out what all those dip switches do. I'm sure you can, you can probably Google it too, quite frankly. That's all I do. The reason I know all this stuff that I'm telling you guys right now is because at some point I Googled it. <laughs> Sorry again about the audio, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to Google that too. Google OBS is not recording my audio. I don't know why. This is just a little demo play of Killer Instinct to show this is a game that works in, 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 in May 2003. It looks a little bit pixelated, but you know, I mean, I expect that. It's a, it's a game from the uh, 
the uh, Nintendo 64 engine. It's an HD game. It's a it's an FD game on an HD screen, so I expect it will be updated. There you go. I pulled off a nice little combo there. I had a little trouble with that too. That that opener he has, that wind kick, it's really tricky to pull off on the arcade cabinet. The Super Nintendo version is much more. It might work better with a joystick. And all this stuff works fine on the control pad. If you have a joystick, you want to you want to use you can definitely use an arcade stick. Uh, Apadu makes one. I, you know I love Apadu stuff, and that works right out of the box with this. But I also have a Quanba fight stick that works just fine with this. I think I'll use it. I'll keep it so that's nice as well. I'm not sure what I'm saying right here. On the video. If that's really the end of the tutorial, there's nothing else really for me to show you right now with the name. I think this is the part where I go on about like and subscribe and all that stuff because if I can get a thousand subscribers, I can monetize the channel, woohoo! And then I can do some really cool stuff like hardware builds and giveaways and things like that. So I know that subscribing doesn't really do much for you, but it does a lot for me. And of course, comment, like, and all that and help feed that algorithm for me and help these videos get pushed more so more people see them and I get more views and all that good, all that good stuff. And that's all I'm saying here at this point in the video. So I guess it doesn't really make sense to wait for me to, me to continue talking. Thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and until next time, game over.